Hi, we're back. Sorry about that. Our phone overheated. Imagine that in Southern Illinois. Wow. Um, so if you're still here, we're still here. And we have a few more things to uh, cover with you today. Maybe another 15 minutes if you have the time. Uh, again, I'm Terry Hickey with Dying Poor Herbals. We're at Dying Poor Farm in the Medicinal Herb Garden. Uh, today with me is Susan Camille, who is a licensed acupuncturist and a clinical herbalist at the Dying Health Center. We're discussing and having fun talking about plants, health, well-being, uh, and what some of these plants can do both from a Chinese perspective and a Western medicine perspective. So thanks for joining the conversation. If you do have questions, please post them. We will try to address them today. And the best part is if you post a question, we'll take your name and put it in a hat for a drawing and you will have the opportunity to win a uh, gift certificate from Susan Camille, which will consist of a uh, introductory consult valued at $150. It's really generous, thanks Susan. And also a 20% off discount coupon for the Dime for Herbals online store. So post your questions, we'd love to hear from you. So we're gonna pick up where we left off. We just finished talking about echinacea and we're now gonna talk about what is called butterfly weed plant, which many people might know because it's a pollinator. And we use the root of the butterfly weed plant, which is called pleurisy root. So Susan's going to tell us about pleurisy root. Okay, so we've got pleurisy root right here. You can see the bees are just buzzing around. It's quite amazing. Um, and this is actually, the name will indicate what it is. It's called pleurisy root. So pleurisy relates to the lungs. So when we're thinking about COVID, coronavirus, and the lungs and infections, this is going to be an herb to take. So it helps with coughing. It's actually um, in the what we call transform phlegm and stop coughing category of Chinese herbalism. And it's very, very powerful. It helps even with fever, um, with constriction in the chest, even shortness of breath. So, um, and even a dry cough that's sometimes associated with um, corona. So this is what I kind of keep in my, in my arsenal <laughs> of herbs for um, anything that comes up infection-wise. So. Yeah, that's great. So Dime for Herbals makes 14 different liquid extracts or tinctures. And in addition, we make 20 liquid extracts specifically for Susan, who then makes custom blends for her patients. Um, which is really wonderful. So we love working together on all of this and sharing our ideas. Um, and pleurisy root is one of the special tincture uh, liquid extracts that we make for Susan. So you can get some of these from her and you can get some of them from Dime Per Herbals. It's perfect. Um, before we leave this bed, um, let's talk a little bit about uh, mullein leaf. Uh, mullein leaf is all over the garden. It, look at this cute little stem here. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. Oops, oh my I'm goodness. right in the sun. Um, mullein leaf, uh, for, I'm just going to dive in quickly. Mullein leaf is a natural decongestant. So it helps, I guess that would be the Chinese medicine release exterior. It's, it's actually a transformed phlegm, but, but also does release exterior. But yeah. the beautiful thing about mullein, a little different from pleurisy root, is it's also a demulcent in Western uh -huh. herbalism, right. which means it's very emollient for the lung. So it's like a natural expectorant or decongestant, but it doesn't dry things out. Have you ever taken like a Sudafed and you're like so yeah, dry, exactly. that is not what that does. It takes care of that phlegm or congestion, but in a very uh, nourishing and uh, moisturizing way. That's personally one of the things I love about mullein leaf. As somebody who suffers from allergies, mullein leaf, as you just beautifully described, I used to take Sudafed, Allegra D and all of those things. The mullein leaf gets rid of the mucus without dehydrating my entire system. How many times have I taken things like Sudafed where I feel completely dehydrated, but I still feel miserable and phlegmy. So mullein leaf goes right to it. Um, and a good companion to mullein leaf is stinging nettle, which is right behind us here. Stinging nettle is the natural antihistamine. So for those of you who are suffering from allergies still, it's stinging nettle and mullein leaf is your antihistamine and decongestant. Um, it works beautifully on, uh, on allergies, really. All right, so we're gonna walk this way. We're gonna let Kirsten get ahead of us. Thank you, Kirsten. Um, so uh, 
we're going to walk by some plants that uh, we'll talk about probably next week. And I'm going to step in here real quick just to give you a quick preview. Next week, we're going to do another live Facebook video at 10 a.m. on Saturday, July 18th. Susan and I will continue our conversation. We're going to talk about some of the other plants and just give you a sneak peek. We're going to be talking about elecampane. Look at this beautiful elecampane plant. It's, um, well, well, we'll go into it next week, but elecampane is one of the herbs we'll talk about next week. The bees also love the elecampane flowers. It's so cool. And we did have a question come up on elecampane. Oh, did. What is the question? Um, well, Colleen, do you mind asking again? The comment <laughs> went away with our first video. Um, something pretty specific. So let's see if she can okay. get that reposted. And, <laughs> and in the meantime, um, we can go on and just to let you know, though, that okay, there's something they want to address. To <laughs> Hopefully they re-ask it. If not, we'll get back to you um, Thank you. with yes. that. And if you do pose a question, we are going to enter your name in a drawing. So please even think of a question to ask us. We'd love to respond. <laughs> Make something up. <laughs> Make something up, right, exactly. Um, and you'll be uh, eligible for a free consult from Susan Camille and a 20% discount from Dime Per Herbals. Um, and then in this bed also we have St. John's wort, which is just starting to flower. St. John's wort is a Nervine. Uh, we all love St. John's wort. It's just amazing. It's so beautiful. Uh, it's used for so many things. We use it in our herbal salve. We use it in our boo-boo spray. Um, it's, uh, it helps calm down the nervous system and, and the nerve endings. It's great. And we're also going to talk about milk thistle next week. Milk thistle is a, um, simply put, milk thistle is a liver cleanser, but I'm sure Susan will have lots to say about that from a Chinese medicine perspective next week. So um, stay tuned. There's so much to talk about. And as I'm walking through here, I'm smelling this wonderful lavender. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like lavender? Well, there are people that don't like yeah, lavender. Actually, there are people. Yeah, actually, there people. As we're going by, we have um, catnip, which the bees love also. We have feverfew, which is flowering, and feverfew is commonly used for headaches. I think we're talking about that one next week as well, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. So we'll get to that next week. But we're just giving you a... Actually, we were going to talk about this one today. This, oh, is, actually, yeah. this okay. is actually a clear heat herb. And uh, people think of it as a headache herb, which it can help with headaches, but it's a very specific kind of headache that is related to heat. So if somebody feels agitated, um, if it's on even on the side of the head or affects the eyes, redness in the eyes, anything that is heat related, redness in the face, and headaches that are associated with those kinds of symptoms, fever few can be really, really helpful. If you're the kind of person that needs to kind of go into a cool, dark room when you have a headache, try fever few. Susan, sometimes the questions we get asked around things like that, and that's a great example of fever few for headaches, how long before it kicks in? and um, helps because yeah. in western medicine we're so used to popping an ibuprofen or an excedrin which completely masks the symptom and helps you know helps us feel better immediately but sometimes plant-based medicine takes a little bit longer or what how would you respond to that in terms of let's say specifically even fever few well that's a great question and i think it's all the, the main answer is dosaging 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 so if you have something acute that comes on suddenly a headache, a flu, a cold, an injury, what have you, you're going to be taking more of it more often. You're going to be doing it maybe, like I said, the spider bite. Every 15 minutes, you're going to be mm -hmm. doing at least a dropper full for like a brown recluse spider bite with echinacea. Now, that's a little bit of an extreme thing because that's a toxicity level. But with a, with a headache, I would probably do something like two dropper fulls every hour or two. Mm -hmm. And see, how, so that's higher than most of us most of us think think of or we're kind of nervous or we don't know enough about it that's why we go to right. a clinical herbalist to get a little <laughs> bit of right. feedback we, we get a little bit more we feel a little bit more confident then we have a little bit more knowledge and learning with that and also um, but you really honestly herbs can work quickly it just depends on the dosaging and what you're using them for and making sure you have the right diagnosis and, right. and uh, the appropriate herb for it and that's so. why you're such a great resource because you do know these things about dosaging and blending herbs and what people should take and how often. You know, Dime for Herbals, we make all of these medicines and we know a great deal about it, but we can't prescribe. Right. Um, that's not our bailiwick. 
with your bailiwick and other clinical herbalists as well. So thank you for describing yeah. that because I think you know, on, on many of the bottles, it'll say, you know, take once or twice a day, you know, just as a general rule of thumb. But for more acute situations, it's really wonderful to consult with a clinical herbalist who can really tell you how often and how much to take. Because the dosage, as you yes. said, is everything. And uh, we want to make sure that we're using it properly. And usually if someone is not noticing a change with it, I'm always saying take more. Mm -hmm. Take more than you think you need to because these are very equalizing. They work with the equi equilibrium of your body. It's gonna be really hard to hurt yourself with the herbs that we have on this line. Really any herb, most herbs are very equalizing and can be very usable, but I, I can definitely speak to the Dianpour Herbals line that it is not gonna hurt you. Right, so. right, wonderful. So as we walk by, we have um, Tulsi Holy Basil. Uh, which we will talk about next week as well. I wish you could smell it because it smells like bubble gum. It is such a sweet herb and uh, you can make teas out of it. We make a liquid extract. One of the benefits of a liquid extract is that it really is a, um, a great way to preserve the plant. A lot of people go, well, I don't want to deal with the alcohol in a liquid extract. The alcohol serves a couple purposes. One, it preserves the plant. As long as there's alcohol in with the plant material, it will preserve it for years. We put five years on our bottles, but really essentially, as long as there's alcohol in the bottle, it is preserved. So it's a plant preservative. It is by far the best extractor of the plant chemistry into the liquid men menstruum. So um, you, can, you, know, you can use other things. You can do teas and you can do things like that, but the alcohol really extracts uh, a lot of the chemical compounds uh, in that process of, of actually making the medicine. So um, that's one of the things about liquid extracts I just thought I would add in because yeah. a lot of people don't realize that because plants are living beings and as we know, you know, you go grocery shopping, you buy vegetables and if you don't eat them in a few days, they go limp and, and plant-based medicine is the same way. So we process the plants immediately, we'll harvest, we immediately make the liquid extracts. The vast majority of our liquid extracts are made from fresh plants that we grow in this garden. At least 80% of the tinctures that we make uh, come from this garden. And the rest we dry so that we can use them in the off season if we need to make more of that medicine. So that's a the little thing, insight. Yeah, and the other thing too is that the alcohol is actually part of the medicine too. Right, yes. It's just like you were saying, it, it is actually a, it actually is a heat producing herb uh, or medicinal and it helps to actually activate the tincture for, for, for the digestion to actually take it in. It warms, you know, if anybody's had alcohol, we know it, you feel it in your tummy, it warms the digestion so that allows for the herb to be more digestible. Right. Plus it's um plus it helps activate it in, in the sense of getting it into your bloodstream. Right. So um, a lot of people have the understanding that a liquid extract and an herbal liquid extract up to 90% or more of that herb is gonna get into your system, taking it that way. If you take it in the form of a capsule or a, a tablet, maybe 30 or 40% of the herb is actually gonna get absorbed in your system because it has to go through your digestive system, go through your intestines, and then get absorbed into your bloodstream. Whereas a liquid extract pretty much immediately gets absorbed into your bloodstream. That's, that's why I actually really prefer tinctures for more acute things. Like mm -hmm. we were just having that acute conversation, like how soon will it take effect? Tincture is gonna be much more effective. It's not gonna to have to go through all the digestion right. to actually get into your body. Right. So, right. Uh, Another one of the plants we wanna talk about is yellow dock. Oh yeah. And yellow okay. dock is um, very interesting. It's, it's uh, the uh, seeds are starting to brown and, uh, and die off. And uh, with the yellow dock plant, we also use the roots of the yellow dock to make our medicine. We make a liquid extract of the yellow dock plant. So I'm gonna have Susan talk to us about that. This is a really great herb. We're on a theme here, clear heat. So we're in the summertime. People sometimes get constipated. They sometimes have skin issues, skin issues that might ooze, yellow or green stuff. That is a sign of heat. Yellow dock is associated with the large intestine and the lungs, and it's cooling and bitter. So it helps to bring the energy down, move your bowels, help with skin issues, clear the heat from the skin. It's lung and skin are very related, as well as the large intestine in Chinese medicine. So this is a wonderful herb to have on hand if you find that you have any of those symptoms. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. 
So our Ella Campaign um, question is, uh, is Ella Campaign tincture safe to take for your lungs after lung surgery for um, adenocarcinoma stage one? S specific mm. question. Yeah. It depends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would, that's, a, um, that's a question that is gonna depend upon the person's state and how weak they feel after their surgery. So Ella Campaign is a chi builder and it's a damp drainer. So if somebody is having, as a result of that surgery, um, like sputum or you know stuff is coming up because they've, they've, that, they've opened that area now and things are being exposed to the bloodstream and all that, then I would say most likely yes, it would be a good one because it's definitely related to the lungs. Um, but it's also very drying. So you just, like I said, it helps to drain damp in Chinese medicine. So it's gonna help with any excess fluid in the body. So it might be very helpful. And it's the kind of question where it's gonna depend upon the person's whole health profile, how old they are, how long they've had these issues, um, how did they fare through the surgery, and um, how long did they have the carcinoma. So these are all things that, do they smoke? These kinds right. of things. Right. Are they continuing to smoke? And, um, but, but ultimately, Ella Campaign is gonna help, for the most part. And we so. think of Ella Campaign as, as you said, kind of an expectorant, mm -hmm. and also it helps promote the healing of the bronchial tissue, from yes. my understanding. Yeah. That's the chi building yeah, aspect of it. it. So it very much right. helps with production of energy in the lungs. Mm -hmm. So I would say, I don't see how it would hurt, but right. there's always a you know caveat with that. With the well, person. and now that you've asked the question, you're actually gonna be eligible to win. <laughs> A clinical you consult. Be able to win a consult with Susan, and you might be able to find out more specifically for yeah. your your specific situation. Thank you so much for asking that question. And then uh, a couple more uh, while we're here. How long do you have to take elderberry syrup before it can start improving your immune system? Elderberry syrup is I find a rather immediate response with elderberry syrup. Um, it is it is a really good immune booster. It also helps clear upper respiratory congestion. So uh, depending on how um, how acute your symptoms are, uh, a lot of people will take a tablespoon once or twice a day just to keep their immune system supported. If you have if you're in it and you feel that sore throat coming on and you can start feeling that you're going to get a cold or your allergies are really on you. You can take it several times a day uh, for that situation. Um, so uh, we've been telling people during the summer, um, to, you know, put your elderberry syrup in your iced tea, your lemonade, uh, make a refreshing summer drink out of it, and it's a great immune booster. I don't know, Susan, if you have anything to yeah, add to it's that. Yeah, um, it's a really exterior herb. Elderberry is <clears throat> amazing, and it grows prolifically in Southern Illinois, and it grows on the sides of the road. So. Um, it's a it's very available and I think it's a great idea in terms of uh, generally with elderberry syrup I do I, I take it I have people take it for like a week we take a little break I don't usually have people take it constantly um, and but you can you, if you feel like you're gonna get sick or you've been around people who are sick you can definitely take it yeah. as kind of a tonic where you're building up the system right right so, and the Dime for Herbals elderberry syrup is available in almost 40 stores across the country. We're in the neighborhood co-op in Carbondale, we're in Town Square Market in Carbondale, we're in Good Life in Marion, we're in Medicap in Anna, et cetera. If you go to our website, dimeforherbals.com, we have a list of all the stores that our products are in, and you can also order it online. And most recently, Dime for Herbals is starting to show up at the Wednesday Hump Day Farmer's Market in Carbondale. Um, we're offering all of our products at a table every Wednesday from 3 to 6 in Carbondale. It's the parking lot where Sherwin-Williams is. I can't find a better way to describe it than that. So thank you for your question, though. Did you say there was another one? or? Uh, there's one more person who's just asking, um, you know, are people welcome to come to the garden and ask questions? So um, thank you for asking. We love having people come to the garden. Uh, we're being very conscious during this time about social distancing, so I would encourage you to call us. Call Dime for Herbals, 618-732-7000. Uh, 
713-5996. Give us a call and we'll see about setting something up. Uh, We love to share this with everybody. So yeah, thanks. (laughs) All right, so we did yellow dock and we're gonna do uh, motherwort, I believe. So uh, we're gonna step over this way. Great. So, Go ahead yeah, if you want to. This is uh, another herb that has actually been growing in this garden for many, many years. It's careful been out of here. the golden seal. You're Thank right you. over we have it. golden seal right below me here, so I'm just being a little careful. <laughs> uh, another great herb, antibacterial, <laughs> antiviral. Um, so, uh, motherwort. And this is it's such, it's so cute. It's got like a little hand shape on it with its leaf. <laughs> This is a blood mover, and I couldn't help but include it today because it is helpful for pain. I feel like we all need some level of help with pain now and then, Um, and it's especially helpful for blood issues or blood stagnation issues. So menstrual issues, if there's pain with menses, um, even uh, issues of like angina where there's the chest, if there's blood stagnation issues in the chest. You can also take it for that. Um, and it has a, another quality, and I love the name. It's a motherwort. So it's it's got a very nourishing aspect to it as well. And um, the way it actually helps to move the blood is by nourishing the blood. So it's very cooling. Blood, it's kind of a big B blood in Chinese medicine. It's one of the categories is that it it's a very cooling and substantive it's very what we call yin to the body so it helps to keep us calm so this is actually a calm spirit herb too nice it calms the shen which is the heart or the spirit um so if we feel agitated if we feel um hot this is a really great herb for that as well especially when it's accompanied with any type of uterine pain or chest pain Mm -hmm. so wonderful so motherwort is one of the tinctures that we make specifically for Susan Camille. So if you're interested in obtaining the tincture of motherwort, you can get it directly through her. Another tincture that we make for Susan is passion flower, oh, yes. which is really flowering right now. It's so beautiful. Oh, it's so, um, so We actually use the leaves of the passion flower to make the tincture. Um, I'm sure there's symbology around all the little connecting vine oh, things yes. of this plant, but it's just so lovely. We have a lot of it in our garden and we nourish it and nurture it as much as possible. It's just wonderful. We so, can actually touch on that one next week. Right, exactly. So, so uh, before we break away, again, uh, I'm Terry Hickey with Dying for Herbals with Susan Camille, who's a licensed acupuncturist and clinical herbalist. We're here in the Dime for Herbals Medicinal Herb Garden at Dime for Farm doing a live video. Hope you're enjoying it. Thank you for your questions. Anyone that has asked a question, we will put your name in a hat and do a drawing and you're eligible to win 20% off on Dime for Herbal products and a free consult with Susan Camille, which is valued at $150. Before we go, I want to show people some of the products. Oh, before we okay. move on, we have a motherwort question. Yeah, okay. Um, is motherwort good to use during PMS times when the emotional cup is feeling full and one is temperamental? <laughs> Absolutely. I couldn't put it better. <laughs> yes. Um, the reason we feel full is because literally we are. The blood is not moving. It's stagnant. And um, it might, we might have a heavy period, but there can also be stagnation. So if you have clots, if your period's scant, it will not only help to get that moving, but it will all, that will also allow um, things to feel more nourished, calm, easy, cool. Uh, blood is what helps to cool our bodies as well. So, it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's come look at, uh, we have some books here, we have some product here so that you can see what we've been talking about today. Somebody asked about the elderberry syrup. We have eight ounce, four ounce. We even have a one ounce elderberry syrup. Elderberry is so good for boosting the immune system and clearing upper respiratory congestion. Uh, a lot of people like to use it even for allergies, you know, when you get that oh, oogie, that. oogie feeling going on. Um, and then we have our, our uh, bug repellent, all natural bug repellent. We spoke earlier about that when we were standing in the yarrow bed. Uh, this is a yarrow tincture that we've added citronella oil and grapefruit oil too. Citronella helps repel insects and mosquitoes. 
Grapefruit oil helps repel ticks. Uh, and yarrow, of course, is a natural insect repellent. So this is a really wonderful bug repellent and it has no chemicals in it whatsoever. Also using yarrow is our breast care line, the Groovy Booby and Breast Friend. Great for women to do breast massage to keep their, their breasts healthy. The yarrow in there will help reduce swelling. That's one of the uh, uh, healing attributes of yarrow. Breast Friend is for the nursing mom. And then we have the inflammation pain relief oils uh, for sore joints, sore muscles, bug bites, headaches, you name it. It's just amazing oil and it smells really good because it also has lavender and wintergreen. And its companion is the inflammation pain relief oil for sensitive skin. A lot of people like to use that for eczema, psoriasis, um, sensitive skin issues. That also has the yarrow in it. We spoke today about echinacea, and mullein leaf, and yellow dock, and feverfew, and stinging nettles as just some of the, some of the tinctures we have. Uh, one of the wonderful things about Susan Camille's practice is she can make custom herbal blends. She will find out from you how you're feeling, what your conditions are, and she's really great at creating herbal blends. She has this wind tonic. Susan, what is in the wind tonic again? It's three herbs. It's our Dying Poor Herbals Yarrow, it is the Dying Poor Herbals Mullen, and also the Dying Poor Herbals Angelica, which is a custom remedy that um, Dying right. Poor Herbals so graciously three different sends herbs. to us. Wonderful. And, and people take a wind tonic, yeah. For yeah, anything, wind is associated with anything that comes on suddenly. So if you have a sudden onset, um, that then you're gonna wanna take the wind tonic. You can also take the individual herbs too, but the combination is really a trademark or a hallmark of Chinese medicine that these with this little team in a bottle or a little community in a bottle are all working together for the same goal. So the main goal with that is anything sudden onset to release that acute symptom. Wonderful. And here's the uh, gift certificate <coughs> that any of you who have asked questions today, you're eligible to win a, a gift certificate for a, a <coughs> consult with Susan Camille. And Susan, how can people get a hold of you? Yes, um, multiple ways. <laughs> All the mediums. <laughs> um, so we, of course, have a website, so susankamilacupuncture.com. We also have um, just a phone number. You can just call me at 618-207-5556. And we're also on Facebook, Susan Camille Acupuncturist and Herbalist. We also have a YouTube, Susan Camille. And, um, and the please do utilize this because it's good for a two hour initial consult and you get an acupuncture treatment oh, in that first visit that too. Bonus, so, bonus. Yes. Yeah. And uh, for Dime Pro Herbals, you can get a hold of us also on the internet, dimeproherbals.com and you can see the spelling of our name. Our name Dime Poor means ancient and eternal land. So it's the name of our farm. And so Dime, thus Dime Pro Herbals is our business that we make all of this wonderful medicine and make it available to you. These are all natural herbal remedies that we make by hand. It's all handcrafted, made with love, and we do everything from seeding it, growing it, weeding it, <laughs> uh, making the medicine, bottling it, you name it. Uh, it. We love doing what we're doing. So if you have any questions for us, you can also reach us at 618-713-5996. And uh, thank you so much for being with us today. We hope this was helpful. And we look forward to being with you next Saturday at 10 a.m. on July 18th, back in the garden with Susan Camille and Terry Hickey. And uh, we hope you have a great day. Thanks so much for being here.